this year's Youth Exchange Program. I'm here today with SYDLC, Somali Youth Development Resource Centre. The way I got to come across SYDLC is they gave up their time to come and speak to us about the issues and problems that face young Somali citizens. This year's Youth Exchange Programme has, has different themes, including unemployment, education, multiculturalism, integration, culture and religion, along with many other topics. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa nahnu akrabu ilayhi minkum walakin la tubsirun. Falawla in kuntum qayra madinin. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wahdahu la sharika lah. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمَّا بَعْدْ السلام عليكم brothers and sisters and respected elders This kind of exchange is crucial because it's all about changing ideas it's all about networking it's all about developing the mechanism that we all need um, to prosper So it seems really fitting to be here now uh, welcoming people from not just the UK but from Denmark and other countries who are celebrating the work and talking about how the Somali community um, can work together. Integration does not mean assimilation. Integration means that your, your language, your music, your culture, your poetry, your way of dress and indeed your food is what makes you who you are. In Holland you face real challenges. In this country we face real challenges and it's not just racism, it's the economic challenges that we're facing. The EU is incredibly important to us as Somalis. The EU is the reason why we're all here today because they took us in as refugees and they took us in as people who were fleeing persecution and war. My family coming from a country that did not know the educational system here, but I did not let that stop me. I continued and I'm sure you will continue to achieve the best you can achieve. If you think your nation is what's defined you at the moment, it's not. It's the supranational entity, which is the European Union, which, I should add, established the human rights courts in Europe, which protects us incredibly against national uh, interests. Because you can actually tell us some of the ways we need to move forward as a community, not just the Somali community in this country, but a Somali community across Europe, what we need to do to overcome some of those challenges. To be quite honest, it's an excellent idea, this uh, youth exchange program, to see so many different Somali um, youngsters and professionals from so many different countries all gathered in one, in one place. It's a great way of um, interacting, communicating, find out, finding out about one's experience and how you can bet yourself and, and it's a great motivational tool. What I've seen here is like, uh, talk about the important things, the, uh, not the consequences, but the things where, like education. And let's face it, we now live in a global world. You can't exist in this society without knowing about other people's needs and aspirations and expectations. <laughs> What citizenship means according to the dictionary is this, it's, well, a citizen is a person who owes loyalty to and, entitlement, and is entitled to the protection of a state or nation. I found this event extremely useful, especially today's workshops, because we've discussed ideas of identity, we've discussed what citizenship means. You can be an active citizen by helping them understand our society, engage with our society and develop your own support networks. Which set networks then have to be open, in my view, to the wider community to come and learn about your culture. For us to understand what citizenship means, it kind of gives us the tool to um, overcome any sort of um, negative connotations that are attached to our communities. How young Somalis represented in their host societies? I'm thinking, get everyone active, like work-wise, jobs, studies, whatever, and then on our spare time, organise. <laughs> Everyone has been very active and on a high level of um, participation and the speakers, the guest speakers were very interesting in terms of uh, the discussions we had, the workshops, so it's been um, good times. The thing is, in life, for example, we need more teachers, more nurses, more doctors. We need more businessmen and businesswomen. If you go to medical school and you become a doctor, your options are actually broader than if you don't go to medical school. Because in medicine, we have doctors who do economics. You know, when you had a, a Somali doctor, Somali counselor, Somali police officer, there, there were young people in the room who um, 
you can see the light in their, in their eyes and they, 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 can, they believe that they can do this. What was the trick um, in actually selling yourself to a society that is not symbolically Somali, um, but obviously have aspirations that may be similar to us? There is, a, there is a whole issue around race and religion, but I think if you're candid and honest enough with people and you go to them face to face and you say to them, I want to represent you, if for, if, 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 for, if for racist or racial reasons they refuse not to vote for you, then you don't want to be their local representative. I wouldn't want to be the local representative of a bunch of racists. Thank you. But that's not, you know, uh, Herbin is the centre of civilization. very uh, civilised people. Because of the society that we live in, a lot of people have a bad perception of being a police officer, even within our Somali community, so how did you overcome that? Deep down inside, as long as I knew what I was doing, what I was, doing was right, and it made me feel good about myself, and I had no guilty conscience, I had no issues, I didn't care what people think of me. Even certain parts of my family had issues with me being a police officer. They, they informed me, they informed me why, why do you want to do this? Why do you, 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 could, you could be so much more, why didn't you do something else? But it's what I wanted to do. What the police officer said and the councillor said, basically if you want to try and change things, and don't stay on the sideline and talk about it, just go in there and change it from inside. So basically, that, yeah, that's what, that's what we think as well in our session group in Holland. Uh, I found this event very useful because uh, I uh, found that the SYDRC concept is a good concept that we can take with us to Sweden and imp implement it. I have met a lot of people from different countries and as we tend to uh, engage in discussions, I tend to notice that we, ha we have the same problems in every country. The young smiles face similar problems. To start off with, one has to understand that social exclusion applies to you know, many different people from many different backgrounds. It's not something exclusive to Somali people. I used to think, you know, if they're not from your country, you don't have to talk to them, you don't have to, you know, if you don't know them, you don't have to talk to them. But now, um, coming to the Youth Exchange with people from Holland, Denmark and Sweden, I now know that if, if I socialise with them, then I could like learn, we could bounce off each other, learn more about each other. If you exclude yourself from the society, you will be excluded. So I think it's up to you to um, engage with uh, uh, exchange programs, which is uh, SYDRC is offering, um, workshops, events. You have to integrate with people in the society. You cannot be uh, excluded from the society and just uh, be with people from Somalia. London is an excellent example that many people from many different cultures live together and you have to integrate and you have to work with these people so that you can overcome these um, problems. I think education is the most important tool for them to overcome social exclusion. It gives you, um, it makes you a person with an insight. It gives you the skills that you need to kind of critically look at the world around you. I think politics is a very interesting uh, tool to use if you want to overcome barriers. A lot of Somalis don't want to be into politics that much, which I think uh, it's in their disadvantage. And you can change a lot through politics. You have to lobby for yourself and for your own interests. Because if you're not going to do it yourself, no one else will know what you want. And it's always important that if something is in your heart and if you want to go for it, then there should be nothing stopping you. I mean, for example, when I was in school, I faced exclusion, I faced bullying, I faced all this. But I'm here today as a testament that if you work hard and if you achieve something, then anything is possible. There are a lot of obstacles and there are a lot of things to overcome. But and I would say don't let those things stop you, but motivate you to just to overcome them. And just, just do your best. I think youth exchange programs like this are incredibly important and need to continue in the future because if we stop having events like this we will stop talking about the issues which are important to young people and stop talking about cross-culture work so we can't let the lack of funding in the economy, the financial restraints stop us from carrying on programs like this. It's not very often that young people come out. Voting amongst young people is very low so hopefully by young people coming here and the work that SYDRC do, it's encouraging young people to come out, to get involved, to get engaged and to actually tell us what they think we should be doing. My future aims as an individual is to become a pilot, along with, along with that being involved in my local community and some sort of capacity with SYDRC. 
possibly sitting on their board of trustees and if the opportunity arises to run for Prime Minister of the UK. That's why they gave me the opportunity to, to host the opening ceremony and um, it really boosted my confidence hugely. And you know, now I think I, it's easier for, for me to socialise now. Just to see like, a guy like a Jamal, 12 years old, and talking that way and so smart and I'm just, it makes me proud. It means like there's a hope for Somalis and Somalia. I would like to have uh, more opportunities to like to speak out loud to the elders, more opportunities to speak to the government, more opportunities to like speak to councillors and you know, explain what's going on and the problems from a youth point of view. We really have to be talking to each other all the time to try and get the most, uh, the most out of the opportunities and to face the challenges together. And the day we stop learning from other people, I think, is the, is the day we'll collapse as a society. Maybe we can create first um, the European Youth Forum and after that maybe the Somali World Youth Forum. And with, everyone can do their own things, but when it comes to other common interests or the common issues, just learn from each other and help each other. We are the new generations. Most, uh, a lot of us have education and in the future we can be a role model in the future, inshallah. I think it's important for us to continue doing this because let's face it, we're the leaders of tomorrow so we, we better get into the habit of kind of knowing how to express ourselves and how to solve our own issues and also learn how to exchange solutions to common problems that are facing us.